Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about a bunch of different haircuts that give the illusion that a round face is leaner and more oval. But that, that is not all. Today, I have a super amazing, amazing guest on this channel for a collaboration. And that guest is one of my favorite hair content creators in the entire world, Justin Haycox. Justin Haycox is a hair master. He grew up in the salon world because his parents owned one of the top salons in the entire world. He has been doing hair for over 20 years and has been a salon owner himself for the last 15 years. This guy knows what he is talking about. But the coolest part of his channel is not only the value that he adds in terms of hair content, but also that he does it in a super unique way. Justin is also really into nature and hiking and he often takes his audience along for a ride in these really remote, crazy locations. And he talks to you about hair and gives you great advice, but also shows you a little piece of his world, which is so cool and so different. So when we decided to do this collaboration together, we planned to both go on little mini adventures. I'm gonna take you around my neighborhood because I live in a rural area with an amazing forest and ponds and so, so, so much beauty. And he's gonna take you on his adventure. Let's do this. Okay, wow, Gabby, that is, way too nice thank you and honestly i'm just honored to be on the channel i appreciate the fact that you even consider having me on here so i hope i can bring you guys some good insight today uh, before i jump in there though one of the questions i get asked the most on my channel is how do you know if you're with a good stylist or how do you find a good stylist? And I'll tell you that I've been very lucky, right? None of this was my doing, but I've been fortunate to work around a lot of really, really solid stylists. And the one thing that I've learned is this. If you find a stylist that has been doing this for a while and they still are constantly trying to learn new techniques, they're very humble in their abilities, they recognize that there are plenty of other stylists out there that are also amazing at that career and that they can learn from, if you find a stylist like that, you're definitely in a good chair or you're at least on the right track. So just keep that in mind and if you've noticed, Gabby is kind of all of those things. So with that said, if you're watching this channel, yeah, you're in good hands. So I just am glad to even be here. But when we're talking about finding a round face shape, here's how you're gonna go ahead and do that. It's very simple. Go over to a mirror, pull your hair back so you can see your actual face. Now there's four things that you're gonna pay attention to. First thing you're gonna look at is your hairline. Is your hairline straight or is it more rounded? The next thing you're gonna look at is your jawline. Are you seeing a lot of angles or is it more rounded? After you've said yes to both of those things, you're on the right track for a round face. But the next two things you wanna pay attention to are one, the length of your face, so from your hairline to your chin and the width of your face, cheekbone to cheekbone. If those two measurements are roughly the same and you said yes to your jawline being round and your hairline being round, then you've got a round face. But let me also kind of throw a caveat to this. I find that most people aren't dead on a round face shape or any face shape for that matter. More often than not, people are kind of a combination of a few or a couple different face shapes. You have round face elements, but maybe there are, are certain parts of your face shape that don't really fit the mold. It doesn't really matter because these tips are still gonna work for you. If your face feels a bit on the fuller side, everything that we talk about today is going to pertain to you. So just keep that in mind right out of the gate. But from that, now that we've got that out of the way, let's head into Gabby's first tip, right? All right. The thing with round faces is that you don't tend to have much contour in the face. You don't typically have a defined cheekbone. You don't typically have a defined jawline. So what you wanna do is create that definition in the cheekbone, that definition in the jawline with hair. What we typically think if we have long hair and wanna keep it long and our faces are round is that you don't wanna add any layering because you want the line to pull your face down. Now, this makes a lot of sense in theory, but in actuality, what really actually helps to define and change up the lines of that face is to cut face framing layers into that haircut. And the reason we wanna do that is because when we have face 
framing layers in the jawline area, in the cheekbone area, area. You're creating movement with hair and then movement with eye, which is gonna break up the roundness of the face and give the illusion that the face is actually longer. Another really good tip that I have for you guys is to move your part into the middle. The middle part is the part of 2021. It's really, really in style right now and you can see it a lot in the younger generation. A middle part doesn't work for everyone. It's it's better for people with symmetrical faces because it does draw a line down the middle of the face. But if you have a round face and you find your face is typically symmetrical, what it also does is it brings the eyes in. When you bring the eyes in, you create length and you lose width. So that's another really, really great tip. If you want to have a fringe situation and you have a long face, I really, really like implementing a longer curtain fringe for a round face. And that's for two different reasons. For one, a curtain fringe looks better, you know, really only works well with a middle part. So you're having that middle part, so you're creating a shrinking effect in the actual width of the face, but then you are also adding a face framing layer around the jawline or around the cheekbone with that curtain fringe, which is again, retracting from the width and creating the illusion of length. All right, Justin, where are you at? See if you can beat Canadian beauty with American beauty, go. Okay, Gabby, I actually love that you brought up curtain bangs and center parts. So here's the interesting thing. I'm gonna throw a caveat to that tip with this tip. The caveat is if you're gonna do center parts or curtain bangs, you wanna make sure that your hair texture works well for those. In some scenarios, especially if you're not doing curtain bangs, if you're just doing one length hair, for instance, or really long layers and you've got longer hair and you part it down the center, you can run into a situation where you actually add more volume through the sides and that can actually add more width to your face shape. Now you couple that with the fact that it parts down the center and that has the ability to rob volume from the top taking volume away from the top, adding more fullness in the side, the optical illusions work kind of together and in actually, in fact, create more fullness in your face. So that could be problematic. Now here's the thing though, what Gabby's saying is spot on. It can work well for you. You just want to ensure that you do have layering in the front and you're not having too much volume on the side. So you alleviate that fullness through layering on the sides to break that up. And then in that scenario, center parts and curtain banks can work really well. Now, if I can just jump on here real quick and throw in a little bit of a secondary note to all of this, I love that you brought that idea up, Gabby, because I think it expresses to people that I think clients need to take into consideration the viewpoint of multiple different good stylists, not just one. So don't pick me and just listen to me. Don't pick Gabby and just listen, listen to Gabby. Take a bunch of us, listen to everything we say, and then pull from that the information that's gonna work best for you. Make sense? Okay, now, Gabby, why don't you get on to the next tip and I'm gonna enjoy, uh, yes, that, all of that, and try not to fall down the sill because that would be terrible. <laughs> My next haircut suggestion for you is a bob. I bet you didn't see that one coming. I have so many clients with beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, doll-like round faces, and they tell me that they love the current bobs, but they can't pull it off because their face is too round. And I gotta tell you, this is this isn't true. This is a myth. This is one of those myths that just isn't true. If we look around the celebrity world, there are so many celebrities with gorgeous round faces that pull off a beautiful bob. These are just some examples of them, but there are so many more. The key to pulling off a great bob with a round face is to keep balance and proportions in mind. What I suggest you do is keep your bob under your jawline. You have a really round little jawline, so we wanna keep it one to two inches under that jawline to create a little bit of length and what I suggest that will really make a difference is doing a very deep side part and having tons of volume here through the top of that bob. What that's gonna do is it's going to elongate here, elongate here and create the illusion of length. You can also add tons of really sexy waves, tons of kind of like beachiness to the mid shaft area of the hair, keeping the ends a little bit straighter. If you wanna know how to do that, I did an entire video tutorial on it and I will link it here and I'll I'll link it also in the comment section below, but that will also give you the illusion of movement and height and length, and it will look absolutely lovely, chic, trendy, super sexy, and very current. Now, what I don't suggest you do is add too much curl. 
if you add too much curl to your bob, you're going to widen your bob, which is in turn going to widen your face. So the key to styling your bob with a round face is to add height at the top, height at the bottom. You can still have movement, but try to prevent adding too much width to the side of the actual cut. Gabby, I love that tip and I'm a huge fan of bobs, so you're spot on. I also caught that you mentioned about having too much volume on the sides and I could not agree with that more and it made me think of a tip that I wanted to share with you about actually creating volume that I really don't hear anybody talking about. So one of the keys that you need to know about hair is volume is proportional, okay? Hair is an optical illusion. And so what that means is if you feel like your sides are getting really full and you're trying to minimize that fullness, but for whatever reason you're having a hard time doing that, maybe you're adding wave or you've got curl or maybe you've got really thick, coarse hair, many times actually ignoring the sides, stop trying to get that to lay down more, but really more pay attention to the top. If you create more volume in the top, you'll actually find that the illusion of volume in the sides lessens. So the more volume that we have on top, it'll look like there's less volume on the sides and vice versa. Now, another key tip to creating volume that I think a lot of people don't recognize is that volume is not just simply created by root lift. A lot of people will put product in their hair and they think, okay, I got my hair dry, I get a little bit of root lift, I've got volume. But in reality, volume is actually created by root lift as well as bend from the mid shaft through the ends. So it's a combination of all of those things that become extremely important. Now, the way that you can help achieve this is when you're applying product, make sure that you apply product all the way from the roots to the ends. I'm speaking specifically of volumizing aids, right? A foundational product like that. That is gonna help control your hair so that you actually get the bend necessary to create true volume. Well, there you go. Now, while Gabby gives you the next tip, I'm gonna enjoy this terrible view of the gorge. Yeah, it's tough, but I'll manage. The next haircut suggestion that I have for you is an elongated bob or a bob that goes from short in the back too long at that front, you get that beautiful A-line. Now, this is a great suggestion for a girl that wants to look trendy, polished, cool, and different, doesn't wanna go as short as an actual bob. You can get this bob look, which is kind of in between like a long hairstyle and a short hairstyle, but still trendy and cool enough like the short haircuts are. So the great thing about this is that you get that nice long lean line at the front, but you're not dragging it down to a long haircut. Sometimes what happens when we have a long haircut with no layers and no framing at all, it does give the illusion that the face is longer. However, you also end up getting no movement, you get a lot of weight, you kind of end up with a hairstyle that's that's pretty boring and oftentimes unflattering. So this is going to give you what you want in the sense of having that long line, but you're also making up for the fact that it's not boring. It's still cool, it's still trendy, and it's still a lot of fun. This is a great haircut if you want that nice long line, but you still want to look super trendy and have a lot of styling versatility. It's still long enough that you can do basically anything you want with it, but short enough that you have lots of cool edgy style. Okay, Gabby, my last tip is about bangs. I get asked all the time, can I wear bangs? And if so, what kind of bangs should I be wearing? So here's all you need to know about bangs. If you've got a fuller face or a round face, you just wanna be careful about how thick your bangs are and what length they are. If they're too thick, right, so they're really strong and they cover up your forehead completely, the concern is it will close your face off and actually add the illusion of more fullness to your face. So what you would rather do is allow you to see a little forehead through those bangs. So a little less bang or a little thinner bang would be a great option for you. Allowing yourself to see that forehead through there is going to help elongate your face and offset that fullness that those bangs could add. And the next thing you wanna pay attention to is how long those bangs are. And the only real thing you wanna be concerned about here is leaving them a little bit too long. If they're at the bottom of your eyebrow or longer, like some people like to have, that could be problematic only because again, depending on how thick they are, this could close you off even more and again, add more width to your face, drawing more focus just to cheeks, not cheek structure or cheek bones. So, we wanna just make sure that we're trying to see forehead through the bangs somehow so that we open the face up and help to elongate it. So another option, like we talked about before, would be curtain bangs or a swept off bang, a bang that starts on the side and sweeps off so you can still see your forehead, but you have some of that little softness that the bang allows for 
and it gives you that little bit of point of interest should you pull your hair back it can fall down and give you that little bit of fun there so bangs are a very good option as long as you're just using them the right way thank you so much justin thank you for coming on the channel and for getting me out of my salon and clearly out of my comfort zone look at this humidity hair look at this if you guys have any questions then definitely leave them in the comment section below we will be reading and answering all of the questions our goal is to help you get the best hair of your life if you want to check out justin's channel check out the description box or the pinned comment below head on over there watch his videos and subscribe because i promise you will not be disappointed i'll catch you in the next one